we got ourselves into several situations that weren't good. And because of that, we decided, I think we decided even on the way there that it wasn't going to be good. And then we definitely decided on the way back that we needed to invest in a bit of a safety net. What we decided was going with a KFI winch. We went with a 4,500 pound uh, unit and uh, pretty happy with everything that we've gotten so far. When we investigated some of the other kits, they didn't have some of the specifics like a freaking button to mount it in the dash. So there's certain kits out there. Uh, what are you doing? Why, why wouldn't you give me a button? So if you don't work for KFI, put this with your winch. If you do work with KFI, thanks. Appreciate it. So we got that. The other thing that you need to install a winch is a bracket. So we've got a vehicle specific bracket for the 2019 XP Turbo that we have. And that's gonna go in and it's all gonna go, it's gonna shove in this area that you're probably gonna see basically no space. We're gonna be here a while. Grab a Snickers. No butterflies were harmed in the filming of this video. It's kind of dirty under here. This is the part where you realize you pretty much just want to disassemble your razor and clean it all the way down to the last bolt every time you ride it. Yeah. So you got a breather hose for your front diff? Unplug it. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna create slack. We'll figure it out once we're done, but we're gonna create slack so we can get this bracket in here. Yeah. We're trying to line these holes up with these holes. So we're lining up the winch bracket with the frame mounting holes. Make sense? Good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There's a problem. You've got Looks like a brake hose. I'm guessing it's a brake hose. It's a brake hose. You've also got some wiring. Those can't be pinched. Turns out, brake hoses, crucial. Yep, so we're just gonna clearance that, and then our bracket is gonna sit where our bracket needs to sit. Serious question though. When we get this installed, let's say we put the truck in neutral. Do you think it can pull it? Probably. But that truck weighs like... That's a big beast. I think it's eight or 9,000 pounds. So... Uh, we can try it. It would kind of be entertaining. I'm just curious. I don't know. Let's get it done. We'll figure it out.
exact. That didn't seem too bad. No. Didn't need to take a shock off or anything. So we uh, we got her in. So mounting hardware. Crush washer or locking washer, flat washer, 25 millimeter bolt. They are 13 millimeter or half inch. Pick your poison. Use the ratcheting wrench if you got it. All right, next activity, we've got this fair lead. It's got rollers on it to make sure that your cable on your winch, which hopefully you saw was installed, uh, doesn't get caught up as it goes back onto the winch, so it kind of acts as a guide. You're gonna have your other portion of your bracket, and this is gonna be the part that's gonna mount in the front. So we're gonna install our fair lead to our mount. If you ordered the regular version of the winch, there are two sets of holes here, really looks like there's one these outside these are for the wide version of the winch these inside they're for the regular version of the winch so we got the regular version we're going to install it on on the inside so a little bit of a workbench activity here So tighten those guys down, get that all nice and done, and then we'll jump to the next step. So you've now got your fair lead installed. We told you previously about uh, clipping that that stupid zip tie you're just gonna feed everything straight through and there's a passage about yay big that goes all the way through to the winch and uh, what you're gonna do is disengage the clutch over here on the right side so we're gonna engage it to where it says free spool and that's gonna allow us to move the cable in and out and all we're gonna do is just feed it straight through so that it comes out and then we're gonna lock the clutch back in and we're going to do some installation up here we're just going to take this we're going to smash this right before the cable splits so it'll be just like that try to make this look okay here and then we're just going to use the bolts that came through one washer uh, came with it one washer on each side go right through and put the washer on the other side and we're going to repeat that three more times pretty straightforward Winched up. Now the fun part? Now the awful part. Here we go. First thing you need to do before we start any wiring, take the spark out of the sparky. So we're gonna disconnect, first thing, the positive battery terminal, and then we're gonna disconnect the negative Chances are your wiring came with a twist tie. We're just gonna twist tie it. So we really just gotta make sure that this positive guy does not make it back to the positive terminal. So we just did a basic backwards feed through the firewall. There's a grommet there and it plays real nice. So now I'm just pulling through my slack and the switch is installed. This is gonna go, this red wire here, 
we are going to put a ring terminal on it and it's going to go and be wired to the accessory on and that's effectively just going to make it so that your switch is only live when your key is turned on we don't want your switch to be live when the key is turned off because that will lead to battery drain she smushed we'll eventually connect that we got a lot of extra wire on this thing so we gotta figure out something to do with it so we have debated on our location for our hand switch or our remote um, socket and we talked through the situations that you might be in if you're in a situation where you can be inside the vehicle you already have the toggle switch on the dashboard if you're in a situation where the vehicle is on its side or needs to be righted somehow maybe it's wobbly or teeter-tottering or maybe you found yourself in that situation in the last couple of weeks um, you know you're maybe going to want to be outside the vehicle so it didn't make sense for us to say that we wanted to mount the plug inside the vehicle and instead we are going to put it underneath the hood and one of the cool things about the, the razor hood is that it's a little bit lofted um, or specifically the turbo hood i guess it's a little bit lofted and it creates a gap right here when you uh, install the hood there's there's kind of this this dome area we are going to just drill a hole pop it through mount it and if you want to use the hand remote we're going to keep the hand remote inside and you just pop the hand remote out of the storage which will probably be in the center uh, console area center dash console pop the hood off attach it and rock and roll this keeps all of the, the wiring out here uh, and easily accessible as well so um, i think that this is going to make uh, the installation probably a little bit easier your mileage may vary. We're not telling you that this is the right way to do it. Um, we're not telling you that there aren't other ways to do it. You decide for yourself. Effectively, what you're going to have to do is wall her out a hole about yay big. So I think we got like a one inch drill bit uh, floating somewhere around the garage. We're just going to put a hole in here, put a couple holes to mount the screw, and then run the wiring right through. And it'll kind of look like, like that, but over here. So we have our remote plug location finished. You saw that we used a hole saw. We drilled two extra holes. We put the gasket in around it. I did go ahead and put some thread locker on it. With this location, they gave us about 10 feet of wire. I just went ahead and shortened the wire to the accessory here. So it's, it's effectively just all of that. Fun fact, if you order the KFI winch, the bolt hole spacing matches the bolt hole spacing here these little suckers they just need to be tapped so m6 by one millimeter i believe your mileage may vary on where you want to mount your contactor you can put it anywhere we've seen firewalls inside this thing is very very likely waterproof very very likely waterproof but why not keep it out of the elements? Put it on the inside if you want. Six millimeter by one. What we've done here, we've stacked a lock washer and a flat washer on both of these uppers, although I guess technically <clears throat> that's an upper since it's printed that way. 
So we'll install it this way. <laughs> and we're not gonna use the bottom two. So I'll just get these started. I tapped these holes already. Secure right to that crossbar. So there we go. Now it's just a matter of finishing up the wiring, reconnecting the battery, putting the front fascia back on, rerouting that breather hose, you know, just the small things. Okay, so with your wiring for your switch over on this side of the firewall and your wiring for your uh, handheld remote on this side of the firewall. Um, we are going to leave the accessory wire uh, over here and we're going to put the rest of the wires back through the firewall and we're going to make the connections and store the wires on this side of the firewall because they gave us 93 feet worth of wiring and I would rather it not be underneath the hood. So it'll be tucked up behind the dash. We'll zip tie it out of the way. You'll never even know that it's there. It'll be phenomenal from a, uh, uh, an install standpoint. So much better solution than bringing everything into this bay here. It's not really an engine bay, but uh, into the area under the hood. So we'll just feed all the wires through. There's a grommet here. So if you can't see that, Going through the grommet under the the uh, electrical block. This red accessory wire right here. It has to come through the firewall and make the connection on this side to this fuse block area here. So we might just um, pull out a little bit more of this so that it can make the it can traverse the distance that it needs to go. But effectively, it's just going to pass the opposite way that we just put the handheld switch through. And we're going to have this come up and meet the fuse block, just like we have this also meeting the fuse block. So, if you made it this far, congratulations. We've got our wiring done up pretty well. Uh, if you have the four wire contactor uh, set up, you may have the KFI winch, you may not have the KFI, but it seems to be pretty common based on some research. You're gonna wanna switch your blue and yellow wires with your red and black wires. So, if you see something about an alternate wiring diagram, you're probably gonna wanna follow that one. These winches, um, on, under full load, they can actually um, 
consume more than or draw more than 300 amps. So we're not gonna be able to wire this to the bus bar up there. We, we got to wire it directly to the battery. Um, and you need enough length to get things directly to the battery and the red and black wires just aren't enough. So what I would recommend, swap yellow for red, blue for black, then use the red and the black to go from the contactor to the uh, actual winch. Um, you're gonna have to switch the terminals. They won't match. All of that aside, I wanna go into um, everything that uh, we've really just done and I wanna give you a couple tips for wiring this thing. The, I, I told you that we swapped the, the wires. Um, you can see the blue wire is on the black connector. The yellow wire is on the red connector. The yellow connector will get the red wire. The blue connector will get the black wire. Those will go to the winch. So um, when you're feeding this stuff, feed from the top down. Don't try to feed the wire bottom up. <clears throat> Sorry, Chipotle is fighting back. So what ends up happening, if you're trying to feed from the bottom up, you're gonna find that you're pushing a rope. If you feed from the top down, you'll be able to kind of play a little bit of Plinko or Pinball or whatever your favorite bouncing off of things game is and uh, take the, the wire straight down. The other thing that um, I didn't mention previously is you're gonna have to drop the um, skid plate. So they're 10 millimeter bolts. There's about six of them. I dropped the front, well, there's actually eight. I dropped the front six and was able to pull the front of the skid plate out and that gave me enough to get up in there and do everything. So you didn't see that in the time lapse, but there you go. So at this point, we have the contactor wired to the battery with the opposite wiring. We have the contactor wired to the winch with the opposite wiring. And all we need to do is clean up what we stuffed behind the firewall earlier and push the greens to the greens and the blacks to the blacks. And we should be pretty much ready to rock. Okay, just turned the ignition on and nothing caught on fire yet. So that's positive. So that's pretty awesome. And that won't flop around when everything is all tacked down. But we've got some cleaning up to do. You'll have some cleaning up to do. I want to go through a few things to make sure that nobody forgets anything. If you're following along with us from a how to standpoint, here's a few things you should think about. Make sure that all your wiring in the cabin is out of the way of the drive shaft. If you dropped your uh, skid plate, you saw the, the drive shaft that goes to the front uh, there. Make sure that you don't have any issues with uh, interference there. So uh, you probably got ample zip ties, use them. Oh, your breather. We routed the breather um, in a different manner earlier and so I want you to make sure that you route it properly. And so what I'm going to do is just redo the routing on ours real quick, hopefully. And what I'm going to do actually, if you look back in here, you can see where the breather comes out. The breather hose on these 19s is a little short. So uh, I'll focus a little bit further to the right. Yeah. So the breather hose is a little bit short. It's this guy. Um, I'm just gonna take it up the middle of the winch bracket. And we probably, as long as we keep this thing out of the way of the cable, we won't have any issues. You see that the, the cable kind of rides right on top of that breather. So not too excited about that, but and then we're going to bring it up here in front of the, the shock. And go ahead and terminate it on this little barbed fitting. And then we're just going to latch these guys down. To 
just like they would normally be latched down so that one's good that's it we got uh an hour's worth of work of just putting stuff back together now uh, in front of us so we're gonna go do that maybe open a celebratory beverage it is something o'clock seven o'clock we this is the first thing we did today so it's 7 p.m. I think right we started now. at 11. I think it was earlier. Or than that, earlier. Wasn't it? I mean, I was out here. I was nervous because I was out here moving stuff, moving the lawnmower before 9 o'clock, and I didn't want to wake anybody up. So, um, we uh, this is an all day project. The if you think that you're halfway when you're doing the uh, when you've got the the mount in. Probably about a third. So, just want to say thanks for sticking with us. This is uh, probably going to be a long one, and um, we appreciate everything that you guys do, liking and subscribing, and sharing with your friends. Uh, we'd ask that you do that again here. Um, it does help us in tremendous ways. Uh, you know, eventually it'll get us to that point where uh, we'll we'll be able to monetize this hobby, and so it's a uh, it's a good thing um, for us. And uh, when we can do that, it eases the financial burdens and does some, some other cool things for us. So um, definitely appreciate you guys going and doing that. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Here goes nothing.